cotton op-ed. So Cotton was uh, defending in this. He was defending George Bush, uh, George Bush, uh, Donald Trump's policy with regard to bringing the military into uh, into American cities to crush the, um, I was going to say insurgency, but actually if it was the Taliban, it was an insurgency, we wouldn't crush them. But when it comes to our own people and when it's, it comes to police action, yeah, we need the military to crush them. But anyway, I don't want to get into the, the actual view. Um, what's interesting is that Donald Trump presented this view of we need to bring in the military, we need to use the, uh, uh, what is it, the uh, Insurrection Act in order, to, uh, in order to bring in the military into the cities and to stop the violence associated with this, uh, the rioting, uh, but also to stop the, the demonstrations because there's no way you can separate out the two, particularly not the military. The military is not built to separate out, oh, you're just a demonstrator, oh, you're a writer, you're a demonstrator, you're a writer. I'll shoot. No, I'm not allowed to shoot because, you know, it's, this is the homeland. So what is the military exactly supposed to do? Blow up buildings? Use grenades? Miss what, what are they going to do? Anyway, Trump wanted to bring in the military. And uh, General Mathis, and let me remind you who General Mathis is. He, he was a commander of, of forces in, in Iraq uh, during the insurgency. He was a decorated general. Uh, when, uh, when Trump was looking for Secretary of Defense, uh, when Mathis was chosen, everybody was like, ooh, wow, this is a real guy, this is the real thing. Now, I'll also remind you, and you can go back and check the shows. This is in 2016. Uh, you can find the show. I've never been impressed with Mathis. I think Mathis is of a generation of wimps. Mathis is of a generation of generals who don't believe in winning wars. He might be called Mad Dog Mathis, but I would call him Snowflake Mathis for his policy advice and for the way he executed the war in Iraq. He actually lost the war in Iraq. He lost the insurgency in Iraq. He is no great general. He is no Patton. He is no MacArthur. He is no uh, Sherman. He is one of the modern generation with Petraeus of generals who are you know, afraid to actually win and certainly afraid to do anything that would suggest winning. He is a general brought up on the just war theory practice. I was never impressed by Mathis. Let's be very clear. Math, Mattis, not Mathis, okay. Mattis, sorry, Mattis. But everybody else was impressed. Oh, the right loved him. Mad Dog Mattis, he was the hero of the right. When he came in, I got, when I criticized him, I was like, whoa, you can't criticize this guy. He's a hero. He's this legend of generals. He is the epitome of everything good. And for the whole time he was in the White House, I would hear things like, oh, yeah, Matt, Matt, Mattis supports Trump. And if Mattis supports Trump, Trump must be good because Mattis is a real adult. He's a real human being. Mattis is amazing, right? Oh, no end to the compliments to how good Mattis actually was. And then, and then, Mattis published a public statement denouncing the President of the United States, denouncing Donald Trump. Well, after he had left his post, uh, left his post after disagreeing with Trump about Syria, but about a lot of things. We'll never, you know, hopefully one day we'll know the truth about what happened there, but about a lot of different things. And Mattis wrote the scathing, scathing attack on Trump, not just on his decision, uh, on his decision to send troops or to advocate for troops going in uh, to break up the demonstrations. But more than that, he's got a, a line here uh, we are witnessing the consequence of three years. Uh, no, let's start earlier. Donald Trump is the first president in my lifetime who does not try to unite the American people, nor does even pretend to try. Instead, he tries to divide us. I think all of that's true, by the way. We are witnessing the consequence of three years of, a de of this deliberate effort. We are witnessing the consequence of three years without mature leadership. That, to me, is the key line. Without mature leadership, he's calling Trump immature, which is... Phew, Right on, 100% correct. 
We're witnessing the consequence of three years without mature leadership. We can unite without him, drawing on the strength inherent in our civil society. Anyway, this is a scathing review of Trump. It doesn't give a lot of examples. It's not there to be an essay. And, you know, I think, I think there's a certain propriety of he's not going to reveal secrets of what happened in the White House when he was there. He's not going to give examples. He's just going to say, this is my experience of Donald Trump. Now, this is the decorated general that the right loved, loved. And wow, did they turn on him. Within minutes of this release, I was watching Fox. Immediately, oh, man, this is not big, big of a deal in terms of general. Eh, never really impressed by him. <laughs> Go back and watch Fox when Trump announced that he was going to be Secretary uh, uh, of Defense. <laughs> they, you know, they love this guy. Now, man, it's no big deal. Now, he's political. If he was political, why did he agree to become Trump's Secretary of Defense? If he's a lefty, if he's a Democrat, why did he do that? I mean, Mathis hasn't tried to curry favor with the deep state or the liberal media. I mean, if you want to do that, why become Trump, of all people, Secretary of State? And when he left, he tried not to say anything. He did a book tour. And in that book, to refuse to denounce the president. And journalists begged him to. I mean, he knows a lot of dirt. A lot of dirt. He was in the White House for three years. And he didn't do it. And he didn't do it. And then he was fed up and he finally spoke up. And now, nobody is questioning, well, maybe Trump's not as good as I thought he was. Here's, a, here's the guy who I thought was an adult in a room telling me Trump is immature, you know, maybe I should think about it. No. No. Immediately, they go on the offensive. Immediately, he is the bad guy. Immediately. They come to the defense of Trump. And I've talked about this many times on the show, but this is the mentality of Trump supporters, which is now dominates Fox and it dominates the Republican administration it dominates Republican senators very few senators question this all of them went on the offensive against Mathis now again I'm not a fan of Mattis's I don't think he should have taken the job of being Trump's defense secretary I wouldn't have not that anybody would ask me but he did and they loved him for a while but now we're in a position where the right the mainstream Republican right, not just some wacky fringe, but the mainstream Republican right, including many of my listeners. Whatever Trump does, whatever Trump says, no matter what depravities he indulges in, no matter what his, it reflects about his moral character, no matter who he sleeps with, no matter who, who he you know, hangs out with, and no matter what he says, The real outrage for all these people is that anybody criticizes him, that anybody has a problem with him, that anybody dares to challenge him. Mathis is not, by the way, the only general to come out. A number of generals have come out. It doesn't matter. They're all being condemned. The Republican Party that used to be very positive about its generals and very supportive of generals and very respectful of generals. No more. That respect is gone. Now, maybe that respect should have never been there. But that respect now is gone. And that tells you something about the state of the rights in America today. It tells you something about the state of thinking, of thinking in the United States. The fact that Donald Trump, the, the commander-in-chief, the president of the United States, lies every hour. And he's not embarrassed by that fact. And nobody denies that fact. The fact that that doesn't bother anybody. That, that's fine with the right. That's fine with the Republicans. That's fine with the supporters. But God forbid you criticize Trump. God forbid you raise an issue with, about Trump. God forbid you claim Trump maybe is, somebody claims Trump is lying. Even though you know he's lying. 
It's unacceptable to criticize Trump. It's impossible. It's, the right is, you know, we'll talk more about the right in the weeks to come. But the right is dead. The right is value-less, content-less. And of course, the, the left is completely depraved. What we need today, what I call the new intellectual, would be any man or woman who is willing to think. Meaning, any man or woman who knows that man's life must be guided by reason, by the intellect, not by feelings, wishes, whims, or mystic revelations. Any man or woman who values his life and who does not give, want to give in to today's cult of despair, cynicism, and impotence, and does not intend to give up the world to the dark ages and to the rule of the collectivist brute. Using the super chat, and I noticed yesterday when I appealed for uh, support for the show, many of you stepped forward and actually uh, supported the show for the first time. So I'll do it again. Maybe we'll get some more today. Um, if you like what you're hearing, if you appreciate what I'm doing, then I appreciate your support. Uh, those of you who don't yet support the show, please take this opportunity. Go to yourownbookshow.com slash support or go to subscribestar.com, your own book show. And, um, and and make a kind of a monthly contribution uh, to keep this uh, to keep this going. I'm not sure when the next.